What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Podcast, episode 296. I'm here with Griffin. I'm here with Trav. And I'm here with Adam. This week, we fucking watched both Top Guns. Yeah, dude. We went to the danger zone. We I mean, learned we how to a, fly. We went on an airborne cruise. Yeah. For so sure. Something Griffin said the other night after he watched uh, the first one, he was like, man, they're super sweaty in that movie. Right? Almost every scene. And you could tell it was like they sprayed water on them. Yeah. They're, the way it was <laughs> you know beating I mean? like, up on the faces. Everything's yeah. a high stakes situation. Yeah. I have, I, like, in, in the four hours, they give or take about four hours of watching both of these. I've never wanted to go to the beach more in my fucking life than, <laughs> dude. And not even that. Like, I think it's because like I was watching the movie, so I was like, the, "We'll get to it." But there's parts in the, both of the films where you do get on the edge of your seat. You're like, "What?" Like, yeah, bro. And yeah. when they were so playing sitting, volleyball, yeah, how <laughs> cheesy. Oh, even the football montage in Maverick yeah. was lame. Well, dude, you could almost play these movies side by side and they're the same. Like, yeah. Small variations. Very small variations. But when they were I playing, mean, they kept doing the, the fucking high five where they would hit it up top and down low. Yeah, and yeah. And the fucking dude that was on Ice team kept, he was just over in the background, slow motion, like, yeah. <laughs> you know? I was oh, like, this had- is funny. They hammed that bro time up for real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And dude, like, wasn't Maverick kind of a bad guy? Like, in that Maverick first didn't movie, give a shit. That's the thing. <laughs> Maverick exactly. did not give a fuck That's, in that, both <sighs> movies. He did. The only thing that mattered to him was, like, what the people that mattered, like, you know, the important people in his life, how they thought of him. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of an anti-hero, if you really want to break it down, like... I mean, he doesn't follow protocol. No. Don't know why they continue to keep letting him get in a fucking plane. Dude, speaking of that, <laughs> like, I un- I understand that this is taxpayer money that he's destroying. I get that, right? But how often do we need to be reminded how expensive these yeah. jets are and how they're not, they're the taxpayers. Mo- Dude, the government don't give a fuck He's about like, the taxpayers. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about the jet. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? Like, yeah. Calm, yeah. Calm fuck down. He's like, it's, it's uh, probably not going to be flyable again. It's like, I mean, it didn't explode when he was flying it. So just yeah. check that bitch out and put it back out there. Like he was just looking for anything to bitch about. Yeah. I will say, I will say of the two, I know that we need the original Top Gun to have the weight of what happens in Maverick. Yeah. But Maverick is the, the superior film, not because it's of modern camp. Well, a, a lot of, I mean, the modernization of the dog fighting and everything. Yeah, dude. Yeah. When he flips that like, plane behind that dude, he's like, all right, you had your chance. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and dude, you get the most, you get, I haven't seen an introduction of a character, like a, a character's grand entrance as ridiculous, uh, like as Isn't Mavericks was. Fire? I yeah. haven't seen some, I haven't seen a character get introduced in such a ridiculous fashion since when we watched, um, uh, oh man, what's it? Uh, the eighth dimension. Oh, um, shit. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Fuck, what was the name of that? That but old yeah. movie? Yeah. yeah. The, oh. Uh, um, Buckaroo uh, Bonsai. Buckaroo Bonsai. Yeah. Like, dude, yeah. he, he, like, Maverick shows up straight bon- Buckaroo Bonsai, man. Like, for real, this is, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. I was thinking that the whole movie, because it's like, all right, we get it. Some time has passed since you can always be my wingman. Well, you know, the, the time gap happens. And then this motherfucker just wakes up, has some bacon and eggs, and then he proceeds to fly a, a jet that's barely going to hit Mach 9. Yeah. And he hits Mach 10. That whole sequence was fucking badass. How cool did it look when, when he was... When he hits that shit and you hear him back at control go, he's officially the fastest human being on the planet. 
Yeah. Like you're just like that shit's that was cool as fuck, man. Yeah. And he's like, Don't do it, Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, Come don't on, do man. it. You got it, listen. Well, and speaking of that, okay, the guy, right? The black guy with the glasses was like the one that was like, Don't do it, Maverick. He was there with him. He hit Mach 10 so that they could keep their funding, yeah. right? They it's fired Maverick. Job. Yeah. They they fired Maverick because he destroyed a billion like a multi million yeah. dollar piece of aircraft. What the fuck happened to the black dude? Why was he there with him? I at couldn't fucking understand why he went to the next base with him. Like he should yeah, stay there. I don't know. It makes no sense. I'm like, what the fuck? Why is he like? And they're not best friends. Like the, he, they don't go to the bar together. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like. He's he was just there so that Maverick could have that scene at the end, so it, where he's like, "If I don't come back, you know, yeah, you know, it's been well, a pleasure." I, mean, I, I and and don't get me wrong, I know we all understand that the whole fucking point of that scene was "Don't think, just do." Yeah, and how it's echoed later on in the movie. Like I get that, but yeah, like all the points you've raised are absolutely valid, though. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, but, and watching the original just makes me miss Val Kilmer. Like, I know he's not dead, right? Okay, but that it makes me... dude. That was the best. That was probably the best part of the whole fucking movie, man. It was yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Like, well, the fact that they, you know, because here's here's the thing when they when he shows up, the woman's talking to him. She's like, "It's come back." Like, even talking's difficult and i've kind of seen little stuff about val kilmer th like the past couple of years like there was a really great documentary about him and how it's kind of chronicled his um his life and subsequent diagnosis with you know everything that's happening yeah but the twist in that scene is when he stands up and fucking talks like that's the big yeah. deal that that's that's a big deal because like all that shit, she kind of lays the groundwork real. Like, that's real shit. Yeah. Like, it's not just how they wrote Iceman. Like, Val Kilmer really, like, it really fucks with him to talk and yeah, everything. It is painful. Like, yeah. 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 And so the twist of him standing up and, and actually delivering some dialogue was not only shown, not only showed the amount of respect the people who made this sequel had for the original, but. To go as far as to be like, you know, I'm sure they've worked with Kilmer on a level where they're like, hey, man, if you don't want to say a fucking oh, word, I'm we sure. will not. Yeah, you know yeah. what I he mean? He was like, I want but, to talk. No, let me do it. Like, and, But I mean. And, and d despite all the, the the adversity that Val Kilmer's had to deal with uh, as an individual, to be able to reprise a, a role that he had that, you know, every like there's a whole generation of people like for me. Val Kilmer's Batman. Mm -hmm. Like that's that was my big introduction to him as an actor, right? To a ton of other people, he's fucking Ice Man. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, he is. When people think Val Kilmer, especially older people, they're immediately gonna pull Top Gun, like immediately, you know. Mm -hmm. And they did such a great homage to to him as a character and him as an actor. And like hats off to them for going that extra mile because they could have just wrote him out. They could have, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. That's they how you. That's how, like it, once again, I would chalk Maverick up with Ghostbusters Afterlife, and that this is how you do a legacy sequel, yes. where you you introduce the whole new, you know, you you give the modern audiences all the familiar faces that they know, but you still, with respect, handle everything that's already established before. And you don't fuck it up. Yeah. Absolutely, man. It it was it was fantastic. And that was to me the best part of the sequel. Like was to because the way that they ended, especially watching them back to back, the way that they ended the the original Top Gun, where there's there's still this like there's like a brotherly tension between Oh he them. went. You know hey, you. Yeah. When he, yeah. When he gets out of the thing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you. Well, dude, when he um, throws the dog tags in the water, I'm like, nah, I probably would have held on to those, but that's just Yeah. Ex yeah. I mean, that was a little, a little too much. There, like it's know? a diamond. You're not on the Titanic. Yeah. Come on. But the fact that like, I, like 
Maverick made that much of an impression on him that he's kept like single-handedly kept him in the Navy for his entire career. It seems like, you know, well, that dog fight, man, we're like, we're out, we're back in the Indian ocean again, you know? Well, yeah. Where we well, started the movie. Well, well, what's crazy is that, you know, okay. to, to add what you were saying, uh, Griff about Osman always pulling the call for him and everything. They really had to hammer that in <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, when you think about it, everything at the end of Top Gun, if it was a real world scenario, Maverick would have been discharged like stat. Yeah. Oh yeah. For I mean, sure. He, I mean, he would have, he would have been, I mean, one could argue he would have been kicked out before like even getting to some of the points in the movie, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but I would say Top Gun gets, it's what happens when a bad loot lieutenant decision pays off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, either, you either do a bad lieutenant decision or a maverick move. And I mean, nobody's and got like that. Like and like that, the next the next part of the saga has continued now. We've had a long run of, of bad lieutenant decisions, and now we're going to start calling maverick moves. Yeah. Dude, maverick when he moves. got over the top of him, and he was like, all right, let's do it. Get it over with. Yeah, and they all were right. spinning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Like you went below the the barrier, and it's like that whole scene where he was reaming him out, and he's like, "Well, uh, can I ask for a request?" He's like, "What?" It's like to to lower the well, you need to file to the paperwork. The like, Here you go. Yeah, it's paperwork. Yeah. The dog fights it, though, like when you watch the first one, whatever, yeah. and there's a lot of that face camera, and they're just looking around. Where is he? Where? Yeah. Where? Where? They did a better job of that in the newer one. It was like there was a wider shot. You could just see more. Yeah. Man, oh yeah. Uh, I, I was kind of, I was kind of like, you know, because when they were pushing Maverick, they were like, "See it in IMAX," and I'm like, eh, "Okay." And I'm and I'm sitting here thinking like, "All right, maybe there's one or two really expensive shots, you know." But like by the end, like right here when I got on here to talk to you guys before we hit uh, record. Uh, I was I was convinced. I was like, yeah, probably should have saw that those dog fights. Uh, that whole trench run in yeah. IMAX would have been insane, right? And like, that's the thing too. How Star Wars was this movie? Oh yeah, <laughs> it was like holy <laughs> shit, dude! I'm surprised that they didn't even make a reference to it. You know, yeah. we got destroyed. Him. Yeah, I can't. he's on my six, but. I enjoyed both of them. I mean, I haven't seen the original Top Gun in a very long time. Yes, yeah, um, but it's good to go back and revisit them. And uh, I don't think and, I ever want to hear "Take My Breath Away" ever again <laughs> for another considerable amount of time. Did they not play that for fifteen minutes straight? Jesus Christ! Yeah, well, right. I didn't even realize when I watched Maverick that it wasn't the same girl. From no, the first yeah. one. Now, if yeah. you go look her up now, you'll see why. Uh, yeah, I know exactly yeah. why. Because I looked her up. Yeah, dude. it's like whoa. Was, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I love I love the callback slash opening. You know, the whole opening hop factor oh, for Maverick. They even use the, same, the same, same theme song. Yeah, the same theme song, the same title card, where it's like they were gonna make the top pilots. Yeah. If they succeeded. Buckle your fucking seat belts, buddy. We're in fighter jets for the next two fucking hours. Yeah. Well, dude, the whole time we were watching it, I'm over there like, oh, they're playing the song that him and his buddy played in the other one. And, and Ann was like, how do you know that? And I was like, because there's another movie. Yeah. Have y'all not seen Top Gun? That was like 36 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on, like, All of this is based off of that. Yeah. They even had the thing, you know, where uh, he loses. He's like, I never lost a wingman. It was like, well, this kind of has to happen. This is the way Top Gun plays yeah. out. Yeah. Somebody got to die, it. and then yeah, y'all come in the day. I really like Miles Teller. Oh yeah, like anything that I've seen that kid in, uh, he's he's nailed it, man. And um, I really like him, and he can do it all. He's funny. He can do serious. He can do drama. He can be verbally abused by his music teacher. Yep. It's he's 
the perfect well, package. Didn't didn't he start out mostly doing like teen comedies, and then he was one of those actors that was like, I I want to show my range, and we got um, it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Let's let, let me let me check here. The only thing that would have made up the the end though, where they get end up in the enemy territory and they got to fire the old jet. Oh, I, I, I thought that was so enough. cool, dude. Well, well dude, yeah. when they when they uh when they were when they kept talking about how dated everything was, like the old shit, and they're like, you know, it's a new era, Maverick, and blah blah blah. I'm just going, they're going to have to fly some old shit. They like they're going to fly some sort. Like Maverick's gonna have to save the day in yeah. an old ass fucking jet somehow. And when yeah. they did that, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like they're gonna get like. And here's the thing: I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a. And I know that it's it, it, it's not it's not the first time it was ever done, but uh, a movie that comes to mind as in terms of like jets and everything. There's a movie Clint Eastwood did a long fucking time ago where. He stole the stealth bomber from like the Russians or something like that. And uh, essentially what Maverick and Rooster have to do in the movie is the same, literally almost the same fucking thing. Like they have to go in enemy territory, fucking sneak into where the plane's at, get it the fuck out of there, you know? Yeah. Um, But yeah, that shit was badass. Wasn't expecting an enemy territory sequence. Yeah. Fox fire. Like, if anything, I was like, okay, they're going to breach that altitude and they're going to have to dog fight like a, like a motherfucker out of there. Yeah. And they still yeah. did, but wasn't expecting the, the journey to that point. Right. So Miles Teller was in some shorts and first feature was Footloose. Then he was in Project X. Then the Spectacular Now, which was a, like a romance Project X drama. Is that party movie? Yes. Okay. That found footage. Yeah. yeah. Then 21 and over. Uh, and then he did whiplash. That was when he was on my radar there. Yeah. I was like, oh, then he, absolutely. he was in the divergent series in fantastic four. He was, he played Reed Richards, war dogs, only the brave maverick. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So, so He's kind of been pretty fleshed out from the get go. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, man, I enjoyed both of these. I will be definitely watching Maverick again, and I'll probably—I mean, might as well. Whenever I watch them, might as well watch both of them. You know, there's no reason not to at this point because I mean, I'm watching the original for Val Kilmer, and then I'm watching the sequel for uh, everything else. <laughs> I'm giving them both a full star. Yeah. I enjoyed them. I do. And it's the, just like, the fact they were able to pull that sequel off. Like, yeah. And the I rating. I wasn't worried about seeing it. I was like, I'll see it when I see it. Yeah. And then when I watched it, I was like, God damn, this is good. Like, yeah. Holy shit. Dude. And it don't feel like no. two hours. Nah, dude. The reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, everything are really good. Uh, the, of course, the, uh, user reviews or the you know your normal average people are really really good like it's kind of a it felt like an 80s movie with with a little polish on it you know what i mean uh it was well done i want to comment on on your comment about that um you say 80s um i would like to 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 go further and just say I wouldn't say it's necessarily the 80s, man. I think it's because this movie, even though it's a sequel, Top Gun is not necessarily a franchise. You know what I mean? I mean, it certainly is now. Yeah. But Top Gun was just a niche Tom Cruise movie from back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think because it had everything to do with me in that opening scene, the way the the movie starts, you got the credit rolling while you're seeing little, you know, visual shots of stuff, kind of setting the tone for the movie. We don't, we don't have that like we used to. No. no. Sorry, my dogs are kind of flipping out. 
Through that but, shot where yeah. he's sitting in front of that sunset on the motorcycle. Yeah. And he's playing that fucking song, you know? Doom, boom, yeah. boom, tap. Well, I mean, and just think about it. Like, movies movies don't get made like that really anymore. Even down to the camera work. Yeah. Like, there wasn't anything... Like, it wasn't like this seamless, like, ADD attention level movie where it's cut, 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 yeah. cut, cut. You know what I mean? Like, a million different things, like... A scene would ride out for a second there. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I I wouldn't say it's a lost start, but in terms of like blockbusters and big, like, all right, guys, we're going to the theater to watch this. That's kind of been lost along the way. Um, It has plenty of spectacle, but it's not a film that every single like other shot has to be something like like there's just these moments where they're just talking about shit, you know? Yeah. And actually give the actors a chance to act. And I don't know, man. I just I, I feel like there's just the way they did this movie while I agree it has the eighties feel there that's definitely present. I think in large in a larger part it's got everything to do with just the fact that it's not, you know, it's not Marvel. It's not some over the top drama. It's not, yeah. it, 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 and it's not even like full on action. There's a little bit of everything in it. It's a, yeah. It's, a, it's all, it's just a good film. Right. And like real quick, speaking of eighties, like <clears throat> how much did that predators movie that Shane black did with Thomas Jane and all that stuff, how 80s did that feel? And it got completely shit on by everybody. You know? Mm -hmm. now we're talking about the Robert Rodriguez Predators, right? Where they're all, they're on his turf. No, no, no. The I'm Shane talking about Black. the Shane Black one. Yeah. The last one that came out before Prey came out. Where PTSD, Soldiers. Oh, it, 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 like, he ends up at like a fucking high school and shit, right? Uh, yeah, I think at some point, yeah. And there's man. like a predator suit and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know what you're saying now. Yeah, so I mean, like, how over the top in 80s did that shit feel? And like, it got shit on. And then you have something like Top Gun come back, and it more or less does a lot of the same things. And I guess it's a tonal shift, right? Because both the Top Gun movies feel very appropriate to one another as far as like tone and the way that the movie's structured and everything. And that Predator movie felt like it was a little bit more comedic and less macho man as yeah. opposed to the original. Well, and, and yeah, I would I would add to that too that going with with, with the comment on the tone, um, yeah. you know, the, a, a really big boost in why I think a lot of people did like Maverick and why it did so well was despite the over the top aspect of the fighter jets and the situation like as very very ridiculous as it as it could get there's still that accessibility that anyone could be like oh it's about you know the military or something but it's not too military it's not like oh man how's the war going it's like no it's just a mission like yeah, you're in there for the smell of napalm in the morning no yeah. it's not a it's not apocalypse now there's a little bit of uh, romance between you various never characters, but but it never <laughs> but it never descends into an officer and a gentleman. Yeah. Uh, it it has action, but it does. But because of the real stunt work that went into this movie, we know that like those types of maneuvers, oh. as crazy and dangerous as they are. They can be done. That was real yeah. as fuck, man. And I think that over alien creature that shows up on Earth, I think that's that's a big filter too. And I think yeah. that's probably why Predator got the bigger, you know, the, the 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 smaller end of the stick on it. And I don't know, like I don't know. I feel like I, I agree with a lot of what you said, but I think a lot of it too is absolutely the accessibility. Uh, factor of both films right i think i think there's a, an overall like you would be safer cutting maverick on in a house full of people than you would predator for sure yeah 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because the first time that I watched it was at uh, Thanksgiving. I watched it I with think. my grandparents. Yeah, and so I mean, well, you know. dude, I remember sitting there at the end. Now I've seen this movie three times now, but I remember sitting there watching it, going, hey, "He better not die." I know. I was right? just over there, like I kept telling him, I was like, "I think he's about to die. I think they're gonna kill him right here on this final yeah. run, and I don't want that to happen." Yeah, <laughs> but when they walk out, and you're like, "Oh, thank God they're still alive," and I'm like, "Well, if they die now, they both die." Yeah. But oh, I was yeah, I worried. Thought, I was sitting there on the edge of my seat, like, "Oh shit!" Well, I was. Well, when when yeah, when when his ship, when his uh, when his plane goes down, uh, I was immediately thinking, like, "All right, cue the ten minute funeral scene at the end of the movie, duly noted." And then you know, obviously, you know, we get the fade to black, and then the you know him on the ground, and his eye wakes up, and it's. Yeah. I'm sitting there thinking if. If there was a moment where the crowd just went wild, especially yeah. the older audiences, it had to be when the scene opens and he's just he's alive, he made it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because I mean, dude, in reality, we just like if you're watching this back to back, uh, you just got a two like a four hour stunt show. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's what Tom Cruise is kind of known for now. Dude, he wanted to really fly the jets in this movie. <laughs> like, he pushed so no. hard to fly, and they were like, dude, that's not happening. We, we can't. And he's like, oh, that's cool. I'll hop out of an airplane, you know? Could you we're imagine him yeah. actually doing those stunts, though? Oh, they were fly. like, uh-uh. Yeah, I think the biggest stunt he had to do was on that fucking boat. He was holding on for yeah. dear life. I was like, why is that boat on its side? <laughs> yeah. It's like, we're taking water at any moment. She's like, you know, on, you're supposed to, what did she say? You're in the Navy. He's like, I land yeah. on boats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full star. Both. I, I enjoyed them, man. It's a good throwback and it's a good follow up. And that's, well, and that's, that's what they do now. That's the way you do a sequel. Yeah. You know, instead of banging out, see Top Gun, like you said, when it came out, they could have made three of them. Yeah. Like they do everything else and they didn't. But I think that has something to do with Tom Cruise. Like, you know, back then he didn't really do that until Mission Impossible. Yeah. Where he would come back for a role over and over. I think the money had something to do with that. But, you know, he was real busy in the 80s and the 90s. Right. A few good men. Yeah. You know. You can't handle the. Dude, we need to do that, dude. Holy yeah, he, shit. I mean, that movie's great. He was, and you're right. He was putting out movies left and right on top of that, but he was putting out a qual like a level of film yeah. that like he didn't need like he need not be bothered with a sequel because the scripts were coming in. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Full star. Full star. Full star. Does it get the coveted golden jet? It gets that Top Gun hat. <laughs> when he went to the guy's Man, house, it gets it gets the coveted golden wingman. That guy that was uh, what was his name? Viper. Yeah, I always like that actor and shit. I think wasn't he in yeah. the guy in the abyss? Yeah, I think, I think that so. was him. But when he goes to his house and they step outside and he's got that hat on, it just says Top Gun on it. I'm like, that's merch, dude. How much do you think? A Top Gun hat is like a real one, That's or less. one that was mer merchandised like through the movie. One that was merchandised, oh, like twenty five bucks. All right, I'm looking for authentic I'm, Top Gun hat. I'm gonna go seventy bucks. That seems safe. Okay, you can get one right here from the. Flight Deck Store, which is an aviation website for $18. Oh, man. I kind of want one. <laughs> I'm not even going <laughs> to lie, not... dude. I kind of want like, one. I'm forklift certified. Get your top yeah. guy out of <laughs> No, man. No, when you put it on, you, you got to hear the... Like... You, raise, you put it the... on, and when you raise up, you're wearing aviator sunglasses. It's like, where the fuck yeah. did those come from? 
<laughs> yeah, comes with a hat. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. You're walking through the kitchen and your old lady's like, what are you doing? And you're just walking and you're like, I got to clear my head. Yeah. <laughs> like, got to go for a ride. I have a, a motorcycle, motorcycle now. <laughs> yeah. You go by the camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The how, about the, how about the level of reckless driving on land that both films had? Yeah. Right. They're like, look, we got to make sure all these parking lots are empty. Cause like, he's going to just do the, the widest turn ever. Dude. At the beginning, when he takes off in that fucking stealth bomber, and mm-hmm. Ed Harris is standing there at the end of the runway, yeah, it blows the top off that building. It goes back down. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, just that standing there. His ass down, like yeah. Give him a bitch to slap quick. <laughs> That's how <laughs> mad he looked. I mean, like I said, I know it was it was a ridiculous way to open a film and 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 the whole Buckaroo Bonsai aspect of it, but. That was cool as it shit. It was cool. Yeah, like, dude, it it it, it, esta- it took it took his need for speed and sashed it, man. Like it was yeah. like, dude, yeah, yeah. He 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 didn't got the need no more. Why? Because he hit Mach ten. He don't have to. He he like he's full. That hunger's done. Well, I like yeah. too how they show you just how far away it put him. He walks yeah. in that store. He points at that water and he looks around. And he goes, "Where am I?" And that kid goes, "Earth." <laughs> 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 he was hauling ass in that plane, dude. Yeah, for sure. The way it looked when it blew up. Yeah, that was really cool. Oh man, um, You're like one of those Eli. There, rockets. there was a. Well, there's a shot during the dogfight at the end where he's in the F-14, and the enemy plane does this crazy maneuver where it's got the the trail going and everything right like above it and he and it just fucking does like a hard turn and comes right back behind him that shit looked awesome and like they're like this the 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 level of abuse these planes took in both films especially in maverick like they were cutting that shit on putting it in places it shouldn't be like they, it's almost like they had a list of like a, a they had a, they had a, a whiteboard, and they had like a twister spinning piece or whatever. Yeah. And they put all these ridiculous like scenarios, and they were like, "All right, where do we put a fighter jet? Spin, like yeah, mountains. All right, cool. How many miles? Oh. The whole scene. Yeah. <laughs> like oh." Okay. All the miles. When he told him, he said, you're supposed to teach them how to complete the mission. He said, and come home. And yeah. come home. And, and come home. The and way he looked at like, him, he's like, you motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. He's like, these people are expendable. He's like, not rooster. Yeah. They have a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to tell me why you pulled my papers? Yeah. You're not ready, kid. <laughs> They tried to snuff the rooster. They did. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've learned something too. Black jet, bad guy. Yeah. White jet, <laughs> always like gray white jet. jet. It's kind of like yeah. uh, the way you used to do like the westerns. The white hat was always a good guy, black hat, bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Because every time the they world. roll up on somebody, then that first, in the first movie, that first little gunfight they get into where they're just, nobody shoots anybody. Yeah. Like they're just fucking with each other. I'm like, does this happen? Like, yeah, exactly, do we run into people right? out there and just like <laughs> let them know we can kill them, and then we all part ways? Like, we almost had a na- a worldwide incident right there. You know what for, I mean? Yeah, for that gunfight in that last, the first one to be in 1986. Yeah, that final one where he's like, Iceman's like, I need you, Maverick. You know? Yeah. And you see him flying, and there's just six planes just going all around him. Yeah. To be that old, like, dude, yeah. Yeah. What they were able to do, man, was incredible. And the in the second one, though, all I thought I was gonna get like motion sickness. Yeah. It doesn't really do it. No, they 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 did a good job at like holding perspectives and things, holding shots. It's good. Yeah. I would watch another one. Like I think they're gonna make another one. I don't know I mean, if Tom Cruise will be in it. He might, but. Yeah. The rooster might, though. Woo. 
<laughs> so we got some movie news. Y'all want to hit on it real quick? Let's hit it. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So y'all remember watching the trailer for RRR? I do. That Indian flick. So RRR screening ignites an audience dance off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Was this in America? Because well, I don't know. Let's see here. So as the 2023 awards season closes in, studios are beginning to ramp up the promotions. Movies that premiered earlier in the year have a larger chance of being forgotten by audiences and critics. So a popular tactic is, is event screening. One such screening brought about something particularly special. At a Beyond Fest screening of RRR, the famous dance sequence took hold of theater attendees. The attendees ran to the front of the theater and started <laughs> dancing along. Recordings of the event can be viewed below. So there's a lot of Twitter posts of people yeah. having a dance off. The screening of RRR was coordinated by Beyond Fest and held at the Los Angeles Chinese Theater. Tickets for the screening went on sale on January the 4th and sold out within 98 minutes. Damn. Director and writer SS Rajamuli, uh, I'm butchering that, I'm sure, I'll attended the screening. Yeah. Attended the screening with stars N.T. Rama Rao Jr. and Ram Sharan. The three opening, uh, the three opened the screen screening with director J.J. Abrams and followed up with a Q and A afterward. We have to watch Damn. this movie. Dude, at it's some all point. Netflix. We it's crazy I mean, that these people are like buying tickets up in an hour. Like, yeah, this movie's on Netflix, but they were only to get that. Yeah. We have to watch this. If it's causing people to dance, like this is going to be the next Rocky Horror Picture Show, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's awesome, though, that people were getting into it that much. I, I want to check it out. If nobody, I mean, we'll get to that later. <laughs> if nobody's picking that for four I mean, fill February, oh. Uh... Next up here, Francis Ford Coppola's. Uh, Megalopolis production is currently in shambles. For th those who have been looking forward to Francis Ford Coppola's sci-fi epic film uh, Megalopolis, you're unfortunately likely to wait quite a while longer. According to a new exclusive report from The Hollywood Reporter, the years-long production of the film has all but descended into utter chaos, and the future of it currently looks very uncertain. Premise of the film... The premise of the film Megalopolis is uh, centered around an architect who wants to rebuild New York City as a utopia after a devastating disaster. And his lover is caught in the middle of an ongoing feud between him and her father, who believes in classical view of society. The film has been shooting in Atlanta since last November, and it's currently about halfway through the schedule with a deadline in March. Coppola lined up an exceptionally star-studded cast, including Adam Driver, uh, Nath Nathali Emmanuel, Forrest Whitaker, uh, Juan Carlo es uh, Esposito, Lawrence Fishburne, and Jason Schwartzman, just to name a few. Despite seemingly having all the cards finally lined up, production on the film has reportedly come to a grinding halt. Coast costs are ballooning out of control, and a crew exodus of sorts has been happening with numerous essential creatives either resigning or being fired, eerily reminiscent of the infamous Apocalypse, Apocalypse Now production disaster. So far, production designer Beth Mickle and supervising art director David Scott have walked out, citing uh, inescapable financial and production challenges. The film has been harnessing the same LED technology used in Matt Reeves' The Batman and The Mandalorian series, which in an of itself is odd. Uh, Coppola has never been one to use special effects in his films, and yet he decided to go that route this time. However, that plan has now seemed to backfire tremendously. Financial cost and challenge of the technology has spiraled to the point that the crew is now opting for a more traditional green screen approach, and yet uh, Coppola reportedly decided to fire nearly the entire visual effects team last December including effects supervisor Mark Russell. That decision has left the production with no art department. Despite all these setbacks, which indefinitely makes for some disastrous PR, uh, Coppola remains determined to see the film through. 
He's reportedly hiring new staff to replace all those lost and has a personal obligation to finish to finish his passion project that's taken decades to get off the ground. Having personally financed over $120 million of the film's budget and now forced to spend even more. The Oscar-winning director has to ride out the storm and hope that, like the architect in his story, can rebuild his dreams and see it finished. There's no answer here. Uh, Coppola is going to spend a lot more money than he intended. You can imagine how much he's already got invested. It would be a very bitter pill to not finish it. That is crazy. Check out that picture of Shia Sh- LaBeouf I dropped in general. This is on set. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's this all about? Is he a pimp? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, look, I want to see it happen. And yeah. like, it's probably, it's probably going to make a ton of money. Oh yeah. When it comes out. I mean, with, with this director attached to it and then also like him investing his own money, which basically leaves it open for, um, whoever's financing it to back the marketing of it. I would assume it'll probably make its money back sure or at least break even you know um but that's crazy man like how old is francis ford coppola he's got to be in his 70s he was born nope he was he's 83 he was married in 1963 yeah so i mean this is going to be the last thing that he does right i mean probably not to sound too down yeah like especially on this kind of scale yeah I mean, apparently but I mean, like, he's been working on you know last 10 15 years trying to get it made like yeah yeah so i mean like he's he's done a lot of stuff here and uh yeah we'll, we'll see if it ever comes to fruition i think that it'll get made i think that it'll get finished and released but what state is it going to be in when it's released? Hopefully it's finished, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so director uh, for Deadpool, Tim Miller does reshoots for upcoming Borderlands film uh, with more and more video game adaptations coming to both the big and small screen. Soon fans can look forward to the theatrical rendition of the chaotically comedic open world shooter series, Borderlands helmed by horror film mogul, Eli Roth and co-written by uh, with Craig Mazin, who did Chernobyl, who so happens to have the reins on the live-action television rendition of The Last of Us. Borderlands has since wrapped filming, but now is in the reshoot phase. According to a report with Slash Film, it's actually Deadpool director Tim Miller who's in charge of the reshoot schedule. Uh, despite what it seems like, Tim Miller is not taking over reshoots because of any particular conflict. Mm-hmm. Eli Roth wasn't fired from the production, and he didn't throw in the towel either. He's apparently just busy with another predict- predictably gorier project called Thanksgiving that had scheduling conflicts with uh, with the mere two weeks of planned reshoots. Can you, can you pump the brakes real quick? Dude, Thanksgiving is one of the trailers from Grindhouse. Yeah, yeah, it's about yeah. a killer pil- pilgrim. Yeah. Dude, he's making a movie about that. It's yeah. going to come out this year. Mm-hmm. Well, that's going to be What's crazy is he's letting that pull him away from this movie, which is probably yeah, exactly. going to be the bigger movie. Yeah. Um, But, you know, they say there's no problem, but they didn't pick just anybody to come in and do reshoots. Yeah. Well, and, and not only that, though, like, think about it this way, like, Grindhouse came out, what, 10 years ago? Maybe longer at this point. Um, Look at the success Violet Knight had. Look at the potential success that a studio could perceive that a Thanksgiving-esque Violet Knight, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, look no further than Grindhouse itself, man. Like, they went on to make, like, Machete. I mean, that that trailer spawned a franchise. Yeah, yeah. I think this will be the third... Uh, the third trailer from Grindhouse that's actually getting a full film release. So, I mean, I'm sure that Thanksgiving's going to be good and all, but like Borderlands, if it's not mm-hmm. done right, people are going to lose oh. their minds. You know, for sure. So, 
Yeah. So uh, it's interesting that they brought Tim Miller. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like, and it might make more sense if Tim Miller was attached to the entire project, like no offense to Eli Roth or anything, but like when I think of Eli Roth, I think of like intense, gory horror, right? I think cabin fever. Yeah. And he really let me down with the green inferno. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't really think like comedy over the top, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But who, I mean, who knows, man? Like, this could be this could be good. I remember talking about you know him working on the Borderlands project and everything. And at the time, I'm like, well, maybe he's going to hand off the directing reins to somebody else that can fully capture it. But I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, it's interesting that Tim Miller's stepping in, and that's cool. I mean, they may be the studio may be happy enough with the reshoots that they end up having him reshoot more stuff. You know, like who mm-hmm. knows. So here's something very interesting. Greg Berlanti signs new deal with Warner brothers discovery. So a multi-year deal agreement has been signed between Warner brothers discovery and television producer, Greg Berlanti creator of several popular television series, including CW's Arrowverse and Netflix's you. It is impossible to not to deny that Greg Berlanti is the most recognizable person in today's television industry. Through this updated agreement, Berlanti and his production company will remain at the prestigious studio through 2027. The producer, writer, director will also continue to produce series across Warner Brothers platforms such as HBO Max and cable television. Clyder reports that the production company CEO, David Zaslov, expressed excitement about working with Greg. Over 40 shows have been created or produced by Berlanti since 2001 when he started his relationship with WB. Because of that, it is easy to see how Berlanti would play an instrumental role in growing their TV studio into the future. Zaslav also stated that the company is overwhelmed by the impact that his innovative and powerful storytelling uh, will have on Warner Brothers and its audiences. Warner Brothers Television Group Chairman and CEO Channing Dungy echoed his admiration by commenting, We're beyond thrilled to continue our partnership with one of the most accomplished, celebrated, and compelling storytellers in the industry. Greg is a visionary, a pioneer, and a leader, but more than that, he's a treasured member of the Warner Brothers family. Collaborating with Greg is a tremendous privilege, and we can't wait to see what stories he and his team will bring to life in the coming years. So we talked about this a while back where his contract was running out, and he was kind of remaining hush-hush on, you know, what he was going to be doing if that contract actually lapses and where he was going to go from there. It makes sense why Zaslav like pinned this dude down Mm -hmm. because I mean, he's like, I didn't know that his portfolio was that extensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Yeah. And he, he did the, uh, the flash, all the DC stuff, but like since 2001, like that is is insane whenever you look at it. So he was the co-executive producer for Dawson's Creek. Um let's see, No Ordinary Family. He did uh he produced Green Lantern, uh Arrow Year One, The Tomorrow People, um Vixen, Searchers, Raised by Wolves. Uh, Constantine City of Demons, the movie. Like, he's produced a lot of, like, animated stuff for... uh, He did Free Guy. He produced that. Wow, okay. Supergirl, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Batman, or Batwoman, uh, The Flight Attendant, Superman and Lois, The Flash, Riverdale, All-American Homecoming, All-American Kung Fu, Stargirl, Doom Patrol. And he's wrote for a lot of stuff. Yeah, and when you look next to that shit, we're talking The Flash, 171 episodes. I mean, yeah, he's right. stuck around Yeah, for the long Arrow. run. Yeah. Arrow. Well, he was the showrunner on all the CW stuff, which is, and then he produced also at the set. Like, it makes sense why Zaslav's like, we can't let this dude get away. You know, he's mm-hmm. our golden boy. He's our golden pony. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Uh, I'm happy for him. Like if that's what he wanted and he was holding out for a deal so that he could uh, potentially get more money and get more projects made, then good for him. You know, 
I'm happy for them. And it's a great, it's a great part of their team over there. So some sad news, guys. Workaholics movie was scrapped by Paramount plus weeks ahead of filming. Just when the gang was about to get back together for their first feature film, the Workaholics movie has been shelved. A continuation of the hit series Workaholics that aired on Comedy Central from 2000 or from 2011 to 2017 was first announced in 2021 that a feature film adaptation was in the works at Paramount Plus. The film was to bring back original cast members uh, like Adam Devine, Blake Anderson, Anders Holm, and Kyle Newichek. But the movie was apparently not meant to be. Taken to Instagram on Monday, Divine announced to fans that the powers that be at Paramount Plus uh, had pulled the plug on the project. He opened up on how disappointing it is to hear this as the project was mere weeks away from filming. As Divine explains, he was told by the streamer that their film didn't fit into the new strategy that is getting laid down for the future of the content offerings on Paramount Plus. Yellowstone. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah exactly right well paramount plus decided to cancel the workaholics movie divine said in a post obviously this is news obviously this news is the loosest butthole <laughs> we we were supposed to begin filming in five weeks uh p plus told us uh don't fit their new global strategy we we're deeply butthurt about this decision because we were so excited to bring the weird one uh, the weird one last time I'm butt hurt that I don't get to work with my best friends again. I'm butt hurt for the fans and I'm butt hurt for our loyal crew and other cast members who are now going to have to scramble to find new jobs. Uh, hoping that the film can find a new life elsewhere. Divine adds, we are out. We are out to other streamers and hopefully we will get to make this insanely fun movie somewhere else. Tomorrow, tune into our podcast to hear us talk about it. As always, take it sleazy, and I'm out. Somebody will pick it up. Well, dude, w- didn't they make that other movie on Netflix? The Skintendo? I think so, yeah. I think it was a Netflix movie. So, and net, like Nes- Netflix may not necessarily pick them up. They might, but I was thinking that they signed a deal. Like, their comedy... uh production company signed a deal with netflix to make several movies right. that were well he that had were that non- show mm-hmm. divine had some kind of show that ran and i think that might have been grouped in oh okay some kind of house party show or something i didn't watch it oh. I- i'm pulling him up here um but recently i listened to uh I can't remember their names. One with the long hair. Uh, He was on several podcasts. Anders was on several promoting, you know, we're about to do the movie. Yeah. Um, I think somebody will pick it up because what's crazy is this is going to be the 10th year anniversary. I know, right? It don't seem like it's been that long, but like that show kind of went out on top. It did. You expect the movie like. Yeah. They made 86 episodes. Like. If they could have got to a hundred, they could have been syndicated, you know, but, but yeah, man, like they made a game over man in 2018 and, uh, that was almost five years ago at this point. Jesus Christ. So, um, and of course he's been in righteous gemstones and everything, but, um, somebody will pick it up. Yeah. And I'm kind of surprised. I'm surprised that like, why doesn't Comedy Central do it? They're they're in pretty bad shape now. Are they? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, that makes sense, and it makes and at least they got the rights to do like to their properties, mm-hmm. so they can you know they can do whatever they want to with it. Because like who knows, man? Maybe the movie will come out on another streaming service, and it'll spark like more seasons. I mean, it's not the craziest thing to happen. And with that being said, like, didn't Beavis and Butthead come back on Paramount Plus? Yep. Does that fit in with our Yellowstone schedule? I wouldn't think so. Yeah, I mean, me neither. Jesus Christ. But if it I is, get it's more, just Yellowstone. Like, Yeah, 
If I get one more text about when Yellowstone will be put up, I'm going to fucking murder somebody. Yeah, I almost texted like, the other night because they were like, Yellowstone comes on. And I'm like, I go online and look. I'm like, no, nah, this is the mid season. They're doing a break until summer 2023. Yeah. Then this season will come back. And it's like, oh, yeah, got to stretch out that view, you know? Like, yeah, plus, right. they want you to go watch the other one. Yeah, 1923. Yeah. I watched the first two episodes of that. I am so confused as to what's going on there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, they're, I don't they're out there and they're in the safari hunting a tiger. And I'm like, what does this got to do with, with I don't know. Yellowstone, with Wyoming or fucking Minnesota, wherever the fuck they but, are. And you then know, also like, that season has uh, Harrison Ford, Helen Mirren. Yeah. I mean, they don't tell them how much they had to pay them. Mm-hmm. And I watched the first episode of Tulsa King, which was created by the creator of Yellowstone. And it wasn't bad, right? Mm -hmm. it, I mean, I love Kevin Costner. Don't get me wrong, right? Yeah. And I'm sure that I'm sure Yellowstone is a fantastic series. Haven't got around to it yet. No. Like, I just, I just haven't got around to it. It'll, it, I'll get there at some point, but it just, the buzz from the people, like, out of all the people that I know that watch it, that I take their opinions seriously when it comes to watching stuff, it's like 5% of the people that talk about it. Yeah. The other 95% of the people, I'm like, oh, you like to watch like... Well, it's like a drama. Pitch perfect. It's a, yeah. Yeah. You know, I've caught little yeah. bits here and there over the years while they're watching it, and I'm like, okay, what happened this week? Yeah. Is somebody going to steal our land, you know? Yeah, right. Um, so. I opted for the Outer Range, which is like a sci-fi kind of Yellowstone. Right. Can't wait for that to come back. I hope it comes back. Yeah. Loose but yeah, this I mean, hole. it is it's pretty loose butthole, dude. I want to go back and watch that. That time period had some great oh. comedy series. Like that was happening at the same time that um, Silicon Valley. Yeah. You know, like, whoa. Bitch better have my honey. Yeah. So many quotable lines. And that was kind of ahead of its time. It was. That kind of started the whole the whole comedy movement that people are are doing now. Well, it was pulled know? from the internet. Turned into yeah, a show. Ex like, yeah. Did that episode where they're like doing the meat thing? <laughs> Come on, dude! Like that whole run, dude. I could never figure out why it got shut down. Like, no, nah, dude. Maybe they just want to move on, and yeah, you know, Adam Devine blew up. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> There's so many good episodes. That episode where they wake up and they're still drunk, trying to get to work. God damn, dude. You know, and that was one of the things listening to their podcast of I've I've been listened to every episode, but every now and then I catch it. They were talking about a, you know, that house. It was like, well, the reason it looked real was we really lived there. That was really our house. Like it wasn't a I set. Mean, That's why it looked so real. Yeah, yeah. I gotta I wanna go back and rewatch all of it for sure. But yeah, that's all the movie news that I saw that was interesting. I mean, of course, there's stuff that th there's going to be a lot of movie news next week just off of like one of the trailers that we're going to watch tonight. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? There's already been a lot of news popping up, but I'm waiting for um, heavy spoilers to make. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm going to get on that whenever I can. <clears throat> but I'm ready for trailers, though. Look man. what we got. So they made a sequel to The Wandering Earth? I had no idea I was getting a sequel. Nah, dude. How much further that can they push it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, how much further can we push this rock? I mean, that we... To another galaxy. That, fir that first <laughs> one was a hell of a movie in and of itself. Yeah, what a trick, you know? like. So well, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of excited, but I don't know what to expect. I haven't seen this trailer, so... I'm I'm curious. Yeah. Same. Yeah, I haven't watched it. All right, let's peep it. All right. Let's do it. Three, two, one, play. Uh huh.
Based on the novel. I remember. God damn. Jesus Christ. Fucking infinite crisis universe over here. Yeah. What? We're going wondering everything all at once. God damn. How? I mean, it looks. What? Weird trailer. Yeah. Oh, that dude. I'm wondering if they're in a Dyson sphere. I mean, no, because like, think about it. They're still traveling. Like, like they still had to leave orbit. Yeah. So they're still out there in the cosmos. If they're like. The only logical conclusion for those day sequences is they either found a star to get around and it provides some sort of minimal lighting or artificial. Yeah. Yeah. China was making a a while back. I'm interested. I want to look those books up because I bet that would be a really good read. Yeah, right. I've been trying to make a sun, but it ain't sticking. I'm ready for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a full trailer now. Remember we had a little teaser. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one, play. Play. <laughs> 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 you don't like it? <laughs> Ezra Oh god <laughs> <laughs> God damn. (laughs) 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 Woo.
Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Dude, after the dinner table scene, I was like, we're just not going back. We're not yeah. going back. We're not having a wedding. No, it's over. We're just going to get married. Yeah, family won't be there. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, right. He's like, you know, we're kind of the OG slaves. It's like, oh, potatoes. Yeah, it's good to see the company. You know, yeah. Like, damn, it's been a minute for him. Yeah, right. I'm with it though. You know, the arc. Well, sci-fi original series. Ooh. It premieres on February the 1st. All right. Let's, all right, all right. We'll see. All right. Three, two, one, play. Yep. That's sci fi. Mm hmm. Got them blender graphics. What's the difference between me and you? <laughs> Oh. Oh shit. <laughs> Dean Devlin. Why is everybody so young? One of those generational ships. Yeah, I saw Sunshine. Uh yeah. we can't figure out our problems yeah doesn't the ship have security cameras It was the captain. The captain did mm-hmm. it. Yeah, that looks very sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. Very What's crazy. Sci-fi. Like it still looks like them ten years ago. Yeah, right. Like they're still just using the same. They're like, don't update the software. No, no, it's stable finally. Yeah. <laughs> don't upgrade it at all. Disquiet. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't know. But I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one, play. You about to find out why. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh my God, that's scary. Oh, this is an episode of Doctor Who. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, it's that dude. And that dude. He played a good Elvis. Hmm. 
Okay. He's in a coma the whole time. Oh. Yeah, right. oh. <laughs> he wakes up at the end. Yeah. He's like, I just had the craziest dream. And then they got the doctor turns up. around and he's got the thing yeah. in the face. The mouth. Yeah. The mouth eyes. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. the fuck it is. Mize. Yeah. Mize, mize, mize. Sick. The whole thing I oh. think is sick. Yo. The whole thing I think. Oh, I went to war. <laughs> <laughs> I said, break it down. Did you know? <laughs> That's some sick of you. This is a Bloom House. I can Econ. tell by that wide shot. Original. I'm for it. All right. Three, two, one, play. Oh. COVID slasher. Or the COVID cutter, shall I say? Is that the chick from Two Broke Girls? They have the same oh, rap. This song sounded like ah, da, da, ah, da, ah, da, ah, da. It does. It's not her. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. He's uh dressed like a ninja. <laughs> Bitch, I'm dying. Let me in. All right. Mm -hmm. Sick. I think this is another film. That he direct, you know, he did that movie where he was like the mad Uber driver. Yeah, I think this is another movie that he's dropping. I think. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh no, he didn't direct it. Colin West did. You want to fuck with my mic? All right. Jim Gaff again and again and again. Cry baby. <laughs> His hot pockets gets legendary. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one, play. And nerds. Oh. He slowly. What the fuck? Turning into Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way it's shot already. Okay. Damn. Oh, God. 
Yeah, who is that? Blows up. It's a little artsy. Yeah. It's interesting, though. I'd check it out, you know? Is this it? Oh, the Bollywood uh, trailer of the week? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm excited, dude. Elite living? This one had people... Uh, there was a ton of reaction videos for this one. Okay. I was like, well, we gotta watch this one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like yeah, I didn't even watch already. it. All right, how long do we go before we see a cop? Uh, I'm gonna say khaki 25 cops. Seconds. So I'm gonna call him because they're always wearing khakis. Like, yeah, khaki cop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got definitely the main bad guy, right? Yeah. There's going to be a shot where the camera pans around as the cop turns around, turns his head, yeah. you know, sunglasses, he's got, mustache. He's got the aviators. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm ready. All right, let's see. Three, two, one, play. Okay. I like this. Uh, yeah, promotion. <laughs> yeah. He's forklift certified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh. People are lining up for ass whooping. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> no cop yet he's gonna bless the noodles <laughs> so much slow mo. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Man, I don't know what happened. I either. don't know what. I don't know what to say. I wish I had that I echo mean, on here. Like, Hello, you think that we're finally going to get to that point where we're like, okay, it's a Bollywood, but dude, they somehow 
top it every, every single time. time. <laughs> every time, dude. How? Like, I want to see the one. Remember the guy was like striking the thing on the anvil? Oh, yeah. And yeah. they pulled that camera out. Like, yeah. What's that about? And that was just a teaser. So I'm going to try to track down that trailer when it drops. But <laughs> yeah. Poker face. Mum, mum, mum. Oh, I already left yeah. the out. This is about Lady Gaga. It's got the chick from, uh, I can't remember that show. Slumps of Beverly Hills. Oh, okay. All right. Three, two, one, play. <laughs> okay. Got a cast here. Okay. Say Ryan Johnson. Yeah. It's got a little bit of everybody. Yeah. Looks interesting. This is the Ariaster. Okay. Bo is afraid. This is the one that's going to be like four hours long, right? Is it? I think so. Because this is what dude's been working on since um, Midsummer came out. Okay. So, and he wants to release the, like, he wants to release his cut of it. It's like four hours long or something. I don't know. But it's supposed to be a horror movie. So, or at least, like, his version of horror. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. So fucked up. Yeah, yeah. It's too real, Roy. (laughs) (laughs) It's too real. But yeah, I'm ready, man. All right, let's peep it. Three, two, one, play. What happened to him? He looks rough. Oh. Trauma. Goodbye, stream. Oh, God. Is he one of those people that's afraid of agoraphobic or? So in his mind, that's the world. It's so dangerous. Yeah. So what's going on? Oh. (laughs) 
I want to see this. Yeah. What? This looks like a masterpiece, dude. He's going for it. It's got that everything all at once kind of. Yeah. What was that? That looks great. Yeah. What was that? Um, something with Dixie. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That old movie where there's people in it, but it's animated around them. They like, they took it off of Disney. And- oh, um, that's what that looks like. Song of the South? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. What the fuck is going on? And I right. want to watch it. No, like, <laughs> That's how you make a oh. fucking trailer, dude. Yeah. Have y'all seen that. this trailer or do you know anything about it? Yeah, I've watched this. I've watched like, the next three trailers. Yeah. I this saw looks... something last week where it had, you know, the guy from that I Zombie had no idea yeah. Nicolas Cage was in it. Yeah. No, this this looks pretty good actually. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Directed by Chris McKay, who did the Tomorrow War and the Lego Batman movie. Written by Ryan Ridley, who did Ghosted Series and Rick and Morty. And based on the idea by The Walking Dead and Invincible creator Robert Kirkman. Holy shit. Okay. Hell yeah, All right, dude. Let's do it. All right. Three, two, one, play. <laughs> Fucking Guillermo the movie. Yes. It looks really good. It does. Yeah. Silly good style, dude. For sure. 
Now this. I have not seen this. I'm excited. Okay. Because I've watched it about four times. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I'm as soon as it came out, I was like, oh. So yeah. I think you'll like it, Trav. Um, I'm almost I'm gonna gauge all right, tra the Trav hype meter, right? Uh, from one to from zero to ten. I'm going to say that this is going to hit somewhere in the 8.5 hot meter region. Okay. I think that the next one's going to be 10. I think this one's going to hit like 8.5. And this would be a 10 if the trailer that's up next didn't drop this week. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. All right, so. let's, let's, let's roll this beautiful bean footage. All right. Three, two, one, play. Evil Dead Rise. Red Band Drive. Wow. Mm. Woo. Okay, Sarah. Put it back. Oh, no. Let's go. That gets a nine, my man. <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> Dude. Dude, listen. Look. That is how, like. That's how you do it. That's yeah. it. I love the fact that, you know, for years we were big supporters of like, if it ain't got Bruce Campbell, it ain't Evil Dead. Nah. That's... They, they... Whoever does Evil Dead just has to capture the fucked up nature of the Deadites. Oh, and they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like, <clears throat> the either extreme, like, over-the-top version of the Deadites or the completely fucked up version of the Deadites. Or both. You know what I mean? Like... I'll do the man. dialogue, dude. Yeah. Mommy's with the maggots. It, it looks no, really when good. She, when she tells them, she goes, I've been dreaming about cutting you open and climbing inside so we can all be one big fat. But I was like, ugh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's want to yeah. watch. Yeah. I'm definitely going to try to go to the theaters to see that. And then also, I'm definitely going to try to go to the theaters 
to see this next trailer. <sighs> Have you Dude. seen this, Trav? Oh, man. I fucking had this thing on repeat for quite some time dude like i my let's just watch it i want to watch it again <laughs> i'm full screening it who, who is anybody is anybody fresh watching it i've seen it i've seen it oh, i had to dude. watch it let's do it I actually let's it came on during it. that game yeah yeah so they're watching that game i was like oh what's this modok yeah yeah what the fuck dude i'm gonna say it right now Jonathan Majors is going to fucking knock Kang out of the park. Yes. Oh, yeah. In every conceivable way. Oh, I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one, play. Phase five, gentlemen. The soundtrack, bro. That's so cool. God damn. I mean, I'm fucking doing the fucking, the gesture for moi. <laughs> like, me. That, like. Oh, so good, dude. Let's just acknowledge the fact that we're just, we're fucking marveling the fuck out right now. Yeah. Okay. That aside. That is the most comic book fucking thing I have ever seen. Yes, absolutely, dude. Like, and dude, the fact that it's Ant Man fighting Kang the Conqueror with special guest Modok. What? We're at this point now. Yeah. Like, we're so deep in this shit that like we finally get movies with these type of characters. Yeah. And and it's very interesting that they chose for Ant-Man to be the introduction to the king, the king that we're going to come to know because like perfect. Yeah. He, he's the one that figured out how to beat Thanos, you know, like more or less, you know, you know what I mean? Like it, it kind of comes full circle in, and it gives you a real with, with the idea that they're going off of time and that he can like, kind of like give the time back well, dude, to it's, it's all—it's the perfect sequel to his perspective of the Infinity Saga, because he—he got snapped, or he was in the quantum realm, and he lost a lot of time in his life, and that's the basis of this movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I feel like Scott Lang's 
story in the larger fabric of the Marvel thing is largely overlooked, but yeah. how deeply personal that, that like it, it, cause it comes left field with this. Of course, like you're going to have, like, if you're going to have a character be the, the, the opener of Pandora's box for the next big adventure, like that's the perfect, like reasoning to do it. Yes. It's, I mean, it, it, it it's not a new trope, the whole like, oh, I'm going to save my daughter. Or I'm going to, I'm going to get to make things right or whatever. That's been used to, like ad nauseum for sure. But to set up something as vast in scope as the whole multiverse timeline and all that kind of stuff going on. Yeah. Having it be something small and intimate, no pun intended for fucking Ant-Man here. Yeah. But it, 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 it it's the perfect like foundation for it. Yeah. How how crazy is that shot with all the Ant Man? I I'm assuming that's like the different the different timelines of him trying oh, it. Dude, when we get the shot where it shows him split, yeah. Like I wonder if that is as far in time as you can get. And like we're seeing variants created in real time or some shit like that. Right. I'm excited Man. to get back to it because, you know, like we laughed kind of less left off of this with Loki. Oh, and yeah. I want to get back to that storyline. Like we're finally, yeah. they said this is the one that's going to set up the next, you know, the next. Oh, yeah, for years. sure. Yeah. yeah. And I really, I really like the idea that Loki is going to carry the behind the curtain approach. Mm -hmm. It's going to fill in a lot of character development. That way, when we get to the movies, we're like, all right, we know who the fuck this is. Yeah. We know what's going on, you know, in terms of general audiences and whatnot. And I was, I was thinking about it the other day, how it's crazy how Loki is still a player in the story. Yes. But Loki is dead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And how, you know, they can't just like they pick the perfect character to do that because you can't just you can't just rely on that crush forever that oh well here's how we do it we're gonna pull them from the timeline like yeah. that, that 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 can become cop out ish very quick right and so i'm wondering how we're like what this like what the larger implications of this movie is gonna have and how Loki is going to supplement that with season two. Right. I'm going to make a real estate prediction. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think that we'll see Scott Lang die, but I think that he'll be stuck in the quantum realm. That's a good way to handle I think, that. I think that the daughter... I think that the daughter and the original Ant-Man, uh, Douglas, and um, what's her name will get out. Evangeline Lilly. Yeah. I think all I think everybody will get out. He'll stay down there to try to stop Kang from stopping them. And he like Kang Kang will come out of the quantum realm and he'll be stuck in it. And that way, one of two things can happen. Either A. He can just remain stuck in the quantum realm and that could be a future Ant-Man or Ant-Woman or whatever, you know, whatever the direction they decide to go. That could be a future movie where they're trying to go get Scott back from the quantum realm. Or if they just need him to show up at some point, that's how, that's how that happened. Or I could, I'd like to add, because the thing with this movie is it's going to have to finish an arc. Mm -hmm. I feel like Ant-Man's probably going to die. Well, like, he's straight acting his ass off, Paul Rudd. But when he's like, I don't have to win. We, we both have just, to lose. Yeah. Well, I, I think he's going to die because it stays on par with the fact that it's going to be like... From here on out, when we see Kang, someone's probably going to die until we get the big Avengers fight with him. Right. Um. But if he to it like if he if he does 
Like, if he dies in terms of the day is saved, but he is stuck in the quantum realm. Yeah. I feel like it. that would be a way of linking a, an Avenger to Loki. Right. Yeah. Because what if somehow in the quantum realm, he's able to get out, but it spits him out in a, a version of the world where Loki's about to purge that timeline. Yes. Ant Man's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is what's yeah. going, and, and that's how Never they, mean. yeah, yeah, and that's how they they operate things. Because it would be, I could definitely see Ant Man and Loki doing the whack a mole thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, which is already kind of laid out. Because think about this too. We've also got Scarlet Witch traversing the multiverse, getting rid of all the different dark holds that exist. Hmm. What if that's how they find her and they're like, look, we know you're, you're fucking all upset about my kids and stuff, but like you need to burn out <laughs> Kang, burn out yeah. every version. And dude, how about, Oh, Oh man, the brains are twisted. So you know how I have the theory where it's like, you know how like all these fucking heroes are getting kids mm. and how I pause, how I, well not pause about, I, I, I came up with the idea that, like, okay, they're setting up the moral quandary of which of these heroes is going to kill a young king. Mm -hmm. Dude, Scarlet Witch will be totally fucking down to do that because if she can't have kids, why the fuck should Nobody anybody can. else? Yeah. 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 Well, I feel I, I agree to the point that Kang's going to start murdering people. I don't know if. Like, if he murders Ant-Man, <clears throat> I don't think that that would be as impactful if it happens in the quantum realm in terms of impact to the rest of the Avenger team. Because everybody's off doing their own thing. Every, like, unless they physically see this person die. They need the Colson moment, yeah. Exactly. That rallies the troops. Well, I feel Someone like... Someone would have to I, see it and go back and tell. Yeah. I feel like it's it's kind of beyond the page, though. Because, like, I don't think it would be a death that's motivated to enhance the story for, like, the characters to rally around him. I think it would be done as a, as a way of... For the viewer? Slowly gut-punching the viewer, yeah. Like, oh, Kang showed up, you know what? You know Ant-Man? You know how all he's done is really try to help people and... You know, he's literally the most innocent fucking person on, like, the one person in the Avengers with the least amount of blood on his hands. Yeah, we're going to kill him because we're going to really drive home that, like, Kang ain't fucking around. Yeah. Because the, the whole Thanos level of, you know, comparison that he gets to, which I feel like they got to they gotta let Thanos be Thanos and let these other villains be them. That's what yeah. makes them so, that, that's what makes them good. It's right. not the similarities, but the story and, and what they do that is so different. Yeah. But because I feel like it's not just necessarily Ant-Man. I think several heroes are going to bite the dust before the next Avengers movie comes out and all the, the weight and character development with that. Because the Infinity Saga was based around a big MacGuffin chase. Yeah. It's like, oh, all right, here's a stone. Oh, what is this? Oh, okay, the larger picture is that they all wield the gauntlet. Thanos wants to snap shit. What better way to kind of do the interconnectedness than to have someone that's just like writing off timelines? And not yeah. necessarily just timelines, but like just like taking out heroes from different things and maybe, you know, maybe find some way of twisting it to where. Maybe one of the reasons the whole universe or phase four has felt kind of janky is because they're all connected, but it's because they're all going on in these different universes. Right. And we get some sort of revelation that not everything's been taking place in the same timeline. Right. But, you know, I mean, either way, man, Bang. looks fantastic. Will be it looks the theater. Yeah. Well, like, well, don't get me wrong. Ant Man one and two were great. They yeah. were good. 
But this movie looks like it surpasses both of them in droves, man. Well, and it's also, we're getting back into the story. Yeah. It's going to be a huge yep. part. Yeah. Of, you know, the next, what, 10 years? Yeah. For Yeah, for the next 10 years. Setting yeah. it up. And they just, said this is the beginning of phase five. Yeah. And phase four was like that weird, you know, phase kinda four was kind of. Like, yeah, it's kind of like that chick that you rebound with, like. Like she was good in bed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, but like, I'm not putting a ring on it. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. No, it's certainly not. It's certainly not a theory I sat and thought of. Uh, I came across it in a video, and it made enough sense. That I was like, I, I, I'm, I can kind of roll with that. Um, if you think about it, all the Marvel movies in Phase Four. I wish I could remember what creator did this, or I would, I would name drop them. But they made the theory that phase four was the grieving process in the MCU. Yeah. Because yeah. every one of the movies was dealing with the grieving process in some shape or form. It was. Yeah. All of them. And us as the audience, we were grieving the death of Iron Man. Mm hmm. Spider Man was too. So we got to put a hand on the shoulder and like, you all right, buddy. Yeah, Aunt May, he's mourning that. Uh, WandaVision, Grieving oh, yeah. Vision, Loki, Grieving, grieving himself, in the yeah. Balls. yeah, yeah, Doctor Strange, Grieving uh, Palmer, like all of them, like every one of those movies deals with loss and how the hero's reacting to it. Love and Thunder, he's dealing with Jane having mm -hmm. cancer, yeah, um, Hawkeye, Hawkeye deals with the the Basically, the post-traumatic stress of <laughs> being in everything, dealing with it all. Dude, he got fucked up. He yeah, he did. Really bad shape, y'all. He straight got ran over by a snowplow. Like, how does that even happen? He's Hawkeye, dude. It shouldn't happen. First of all, why are you fucking with snowplows? What was funny? They said he was in critical but stable condition, and I'm like, how are you in both? <laughs> Critical but stable? Yeah. It's a new condition. Critical man. is like, whoa. You know, we're not yeah. out of the fucking woods yet. Stable? Roll a medicine mm. check. Yeah. I will say this. The images that you see of him, it looks like there's something wrong with his hands. Yeah. Have you noticed his hands? Yeah. Like, it's like, whoa, what's going on there? They might have got chewed up, dude, dude. the internet was so mean. On Twitter, dude, when he put that out and was like, got run over by a snowplow, I'm still alive. The internet was like, fuck you, you fuck. And it's like, dude. <laughs> He's great. Come on. There's a, I don't know why they hate on him, but I, I think it's his, um, his. He haircut? doesn't. Well, he doesn't get out there and champion he like some of the other actors do yeah. for certain things. Yeah. Like he's just kind he's of an actor. He's not a activist. Yeah. Right. I think that might so, be why. Um, so saw, he's doing a job and yeah. he doesn't put his personal life into it. Okay, yeah. got it. Like what you're supposed to do, right? Like uh, you know. Look, uh, so yeah. So I'm I've been wondering too, and I I when we saw that very first uh trailer for uh for Ant Man three, what the very first one I guess. Yeah, no, like um, it's almost like a teaser. Yeah, uh, we saw that shot where the rings orbiting around that uh, the quantum realm for Kang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how they look like the ten rings. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, well, uh, another a theory that's floating around now is that Kang made the ten rings, and he also made Miss Marvel's bangle. That would make sense. And. You know how at the end of Shang Chi, whenever they're when they're with Wong and Wong has them straight, and you see the signal mm -hmm. or the beacon, mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's one of two things. The theory posits that basically Kang is depressed. Where's my iPhone? And he's trying to find mm -hmm. his weapons back. Another theory, or the one that I'm thinking now, is what if Ant Man has found a way to put out a distress beacon from the quantum realm? And Wasn't that's what that, that something is. they did in one of the other movies where he had a beacon? 
Yeah. Yeah. So. So with yeah, him and the being reason there, why, and, and, you know, and, and that, that would also explain why Wong doesn't know what the fuck it is because yeah. it's not magic. Yeah. Hmm. Or pod locked on it, guys. When it comes out. Yeah. Oh, dude. Going to the theater. Um. I'll. I'll. I'll find some way. Uh. To get out of work and go watch that, like that. That's gonna. That's gonna get my money. For shizzle. Oh, and what February first they're dropping Black Panther, right? Yeah, that drops on streaming services. So we definitely have to do both the Black I Panther. Have, movies, I still right? haven't watched the first one. So yeah. Does any well does anybody have anything for next week? I mean, because if not, we can just go ahead and we can go ahead and I had that a out. movie that I was gonna throw in the hat, but I'm down to watch Black Panther. What you got? The menu. You remember the trailer? The couple goes see. to that place. Ralph oh. Dennis. Oh. So that's okay. out. So here's the thing. Like, how much time? Because if we can watch Black Panther a week before the other one drops. Yes. Then we can go back to back with it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's you know do the saying? menu. Get it closer. Yeah. It drops on the first and the first is on a Wednesday. Okay. That's fine, though. Yeah, I'm down with that because. Well, that's great because yeah. we come in on the 31st. We'll watch. We'll do the other one. Yeah, and then the next yeah. day. Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna have to write that down. The menu. I'm excited about checking this out because it's got pretty good reviews. And the trailer yeah. was incredible. I'm Horror interested. Thriller. I'm interested to take this. Black Panther dive because if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is probably one of the only Marvel characters you haven't got caught up on with Adam. Well, I've, there's other shows I haven't watched. Oh yeah, I know there's other like... characters, but I think this. I mean, I, I, in terms of like the movie though, characters and shit too. I think this is one of the ones you that you know just because there's so much shit to watch. You know. Yeah, that was why. Um, I'm ready to bitch about it too. <laughs> I heard all oh, of that. They killed off so and so. Yeah. I'm like, who? I'm just over <laughs> yeah. who, who is in it? <laughs> but yeah, the menu though, like I'm I'm excited about this. It's on HBO Max. It, it looks like knives out if it was like a thriller. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'm ready. We'll I will it. say my, my my biggest my biggest complaint on Black Panther, and maybe you'll notice it too, Adam, or at least in the first movie, is it's basically the same plot as Thor. Like almost down to a T. And it's not a bad thing, mm-hmm. but like it's very it was very much like you, everything that happens in Thor more or less kind of happens in Black Panther. But that's not to say that Chal is not a good character. Black Panther is a pretty dope character, though. Oh, yeah. Like, you, you'll dig his suit. Because I know you've seen him in the, in the crossovers and everything, but, like, it... When it when it explains how he's able to do the moves he was doing and stuff like that suit's pretty fucking dope. Oh yeah, just to be clear though, we're watching that one thirty first, right? After. Yes. Black Panther. Yes. Menu next week. Hell yeah. I mean, Travis, you said it last week. You want to say it this week? Checks in the mail. 